Now, when you clicked on this video, you were probably hoping that we are going to build like uh, six different speaker boxes and we have uh, one woofer and we are going to swap that woofer between uh, those enclosures and compare how each of them sounds. Not only we are going to do that, but we are also going to measure the frequency response. So we are going to compare them side by side. And also I'm going to place them in my car and see how loud each of them really goes. So stick around for the results. So let's start with the beginning. We are going to use a JL woofer, a 10W6V3. So this is a 10 inch woofer of uh, around 600 watts. We are going to use this subwoofer for our experiments and we are going to place it in six different enclosures. So we have a sealed box, we have a base reflex, we have uh, another base reflex which is uh, high output, we have a passive radiator, a fourth order bandpass, and the sixth order bandpass, so six enclosures in total. Now, the problem with uh, this approach is that you have to have an open mind because there is no set in stone sealed box or base reflex box. When you actually design a, a, an enclosure, you have to make a, a compromise between three factors. So let me tell you a bit about uh, Hoffman's Iron Law. Let's name the three factors. So we have uh, box size. We also have uh, base extension. So how low does it play? And we have uh, efficiency, which is uh, how much uh, electrical watts you push into the speaker versus how much acoustical output uh, you get. So all of these parameters are desirable. And let me give you a practical example. If you want a very small box, you have to be prepared to uh, expect a very poor bass output because the box is small. Or if you want to push that further, if you, if you want, let's say I want the small box, but I also want bass extension, that you, then you have to be prepared to feed a lot of power to that woofer to compensate uh, for, uh, for these uh, two factors. You cannot have all of them at once. So you have to make a compromise somewhere. So uh, I will uh, run you through my uh, thought process when choosing these enclosures, because you, like I said, you have to make this compromise and keep a, uh, an open mind when you judge the result, because they are according to what I have chosen. So let's start with the, the sealed box. I'm going to put the sealed and the, the base reflex in the same category because they are both uh, tuned according to the Butterworth alignment. This means that they have the maximally flat response. And let me tell you what I mean by that. If you look at the spec sheet of the driver, you can see it has a resonant frequency and a speaker will happily play above that resonant frequency. If you ask that speaker to play below the resonant frequency, it will have a hard time and uh, the bass response will get poorer and poorer as uh, you get lower and lower into the frequency spectrum. So actually when you put a speaker into a sealed box, you actually increase this resonant frequency for reasons I'm not going to explain right now. So in this case, if the resonant frequency of the speaker is 30 Hertz, the sealed box will uh, happily play from 40 Hertz and above. Now, when it comes to the bass reflex enclosure, this has a port which has its own tuning frequency. And we can tune that port to a frequency which is below the resonant frequency of the driver, in this case at 22 Hertz. So when the speaker is having trouble playing those very low frequencies, that's where the port gets into play and picks up where the speaker is leaving off. So in this case, we can expect a very linear response from like uh, 25 Hertz uh, and above. Now to give you a volume comparison, uh, the sealed enclosure is 32 liters. This is the net volume and it's nothing fancy, just uh, 
a, re a rectangular sealed box and the base reflex is uh, 65 liters so twice as large in terms of uh, internal volume and the tuning frequency is at 22.5 hertz now this has quite a lengthy port it's a slot port and it's uh, 80 centimeters in length so uh, I chose to make this uh, L shape so it uh, fits nicely inside the box now let's switch over to the base reflex high output enclosure and uh, the theory behind this enclosure is that um, you make it as large as possible to have this uh, peak in the response and the frequency of that peak uh, I chose to be 34 Hertz why I chose this frequency is because uh, uh, previously I uh, calculated my cabin gain of my car so I will link in the description of the article where um, I measured um, a sealed subwoofer anechoically so you can see that curve is uh, the response of that uh, subwoofer uh, anechoically and then the other curve is the response of the same woofer in the car so it has the car response as well now uh, you have to understand that the microphone is in different positions but uh, it's uh, adjusted for distance as well so if we look at the difference be between these two graphs we can see that at 34 hertz we have the maximum gain so uh, i wanted this enclosure to have the peak in response at 34 hertz and we also gain this boost uh, given free by the car so to say so we will have um, a very nice output at that frequency this frequency response is very bad but if we want uh, strictly to uh, make it very very loud i think uh, this is a nice approach initially i wanted to tune at uh, 28 hertz but uh, uh, since this had a circular port I could make uh, adjustments along the way and uh, after two or three runs I uh, managed to uh, tune it at uh, 31 Hertz and have that peak uh, which I wanted at uh, 34 because the the peak in the response does not coincide with the resonant frequency of the box and now let's switch over to the passive radiator and if we look at the volume we can see that this passive radiator is only 18 liters so this is quite odd but uh, if you follow my judgment over here when you make a passive radiator i don't see no reason at all not to go for a base reflex because uh, they are close relatives so to say but um, the only reason why I would choose a passive radiator is that the enclosure is so small that you do not have any room to fit a port inside because you have to, uh, you have to understand as you go smaller and smaller the port needs to be longer and longer and it's even more difficult to fit uh, that port inside so when you use a passive radiator uh, you do not have this issue so I just wanted to make the smallest enclosure possible and see uh, how it goes you can clearly see this design choice in uh, portable speakers nowadays because if you want to boost uh, the output of such a small enclosure um, you cannot make a base, base reflex because there's no way to place the port so everyone uses uh, passive radiators to increase the output of such a small speaker another thing i want to mention uh, for the box which i made i was worried that the active speaker will have too much excursion and will bottom out the passive radiator i tried this because i was hoping to get away with only one passive radiator but it seems that i tried and failed so i had to buy another passive radiator and since i wanted to salvage the box i just uh, made a hole on the top panel and place the passive radiator on the top panel but if you use two passive radiators please place them on opposite panels because they cancel uh, each other's vibration so place the active speaker on the front panel as you would normally do but place the passive radiators on the right and left panels so that's with the passive radiator let's move on to the four folder bandpass 
So um, this is not the the first iteration of the response of the fourth order bandpass. I actually modeled it to be a bit lower in efficiency, but with a broader uh, frequency response. That is a characteristic of the bandpass enclosures. You can sacrifice efficiency for uh, frequency bandwidth. So if you want it to play a larger spectrum, it will not be as loud. And if you want to sacrifice the frequency bandwidth and make it narrower, then you can make the enclosure sound louder and louder. Uh, after I made the box, I realized that um, I have to place uh, the speaker the other way around because you have to have some way to pull the speaker out of out of the box because in a bandpass enclosure you do not have access to the speaker the speaker is inside the box and if you do not have a way to pull it out of the box then you have to destroy the box somehow so after i realized that i made some modifications and placed the speaker uh, the other way around so the response uh, modified to, to this curve and we can see the Rear chamber is uh, 16 liters, 16.1, and the front chamber is almost the same, 16 liters, which is tuned to 47 hertz. Now, since this is a small box, we can see that the vent, this one has also um, a rectangular vent, and uh, since the box is so small, we, we have to fold it in such a way that it'll fit inside the box. So. Uh, this is the, uh, a labyrinth uh, style, uh, how I like to call it. And finally, the sixth order bandpass. Uh, let me close some of these. This is the sixth order bandpass. And um, this is similar to the fourth order, but uh, it has two chambers which are ported. And we can see the first chamber is 70 liters tuned at 27 hertz. And uh, the other chamber is 24 liters tuned at 47 hertz. So uh, this time I used the cylindrical ports and you can see they both have uh, 10 centimeters in diameter, so four inch uh, vents. And one is uh, 37 centimeters and the other roughly 39 centimeters in the length. Now, uh, these bandpass enclosures you have to you have to measure them somehow because the, they are very prone to error and even if you calculate this uh, all correctly we shall see in the results uh, that uh, uh, we might have some deviations from uh, our modeling software now that i have shown you what was my thought process behind the enclosure design you are more fit to judge the results but uh, before I show you the exact numbers, uh, let's head over to the measurement. So we're going to start with the first enclosure. This is the sealed enclosure. You can see I already have uh, mounted uh, mine, uh, my daily driver enclosure, which is made out of fiberglass. This is actually smaller in volume to fit in there. Since this is larger, it will have a lower QTC, so it will have a more linear response. Uh, I have set up these multimeters over here so we can measure the actual power output. So let me uh, switch this to uh, volts AC and select the current range and uh, uh, hold maximum. And the same for this one. Now let's close the trunk. Okay, so uh, the actual measurement uh, we are going to make uh, is going to be not using a sound uh, pressure level meter because I don't have such device, but instead I'm going to use a measuring microphone and that Earthworks microphone can go all the way up to 140 decibels. I think 142 decibels without clipping, so uh, surely 140 will be fine. And we are not going to reach uh, those kind of levels in my setup for sure 
So uh, to make absolute measurements using a measurement microphone you have to use this uh, calibration device. Basically you stick it inside this hole and uh, this emits a uh, 94, you can hear it, I put it, a uh, 94 decibel stone. So when you are calibrating in Room EQ Wizard you are telling Room EQ Wizard hey this is how 94 decibels sounds like when you measure another tone you can compare to that one and deduce the absolute pressure level now uh, as a test tone I use a, a sweep from 20 Hertz to 75 Hertz and uh, when you are judging the actual uh, measurement please bear in mind that this is a big car and also if we look in the back we can see that the rear bench doesn't fold and uh, the trunk uh, doesn't communicate with the inside cabin except through that let's call it ski pass but it's it's not actually a ski pass it's a hole I made and place a metal grill in front so it doesn't look awkward and uh, that is the only thing that uh, uh, makes the trunk uh, communicate with the inside cabin. So you have to understand that the rest of the bench uh, somehow dampens uh, the, the sound pressure. So the overall result will be somewhat lower. The volume is set to... I also have a, a volume control for the amplifier uh, over here. I don't know if you can see it. It's set in such a way that uh, I have to go to the maximum from this knob. So, for every measurement, I will go to the maximum from this knob and do and see how much it reads. So, this is uh, already live, so let me go all the way to the maximum. So we have 123.5 decibels. Now let me check uh, the meter so we can see how much power we fed into this. So we have 25.9 and 9.9 uh, .9 amps. Take on the calculator. This means 25.9 times 9.9 .9 amps, roughly uh, 250 watts.
Ahem, ahem. So it seems that we have the numbers now. We have uh, the decibel rating in this uh, column style chart, so uh, we can easily interpret the numbers. And on the right side, we have the external volume of the box. So don't confuse this with the internal volume. Um, I think the external volume is a more appropriate number because some boxes are really small in terms of internal volume, but uh, since they have very long ports, uh, the outside, uh, the overall size of the box is really large. So let's run the numbers and uh, start with the first two enclosures, so the sealed and the base reflex with the linear response, because they compare directly because they have the maximally flat response. So in theory, if you compare a base reflex uh, with a sealed box, um, uh, the theory is that uh, the base reflex box is uh, 3 dB louder than the sealed counterpart. And if we look at the actual numbers, we can see the difference is uh, like uh, 3.7 dB, which is close enough, but you expect it to be higher since uh, the box is uh, not of the same volume. It's like two times larger. And if we look uh, at the frequency response, here we will look at the anechoic response. So this is the, re the frequency response without the car gain. So uh, the actual frequency response of the box only, the box plus a speaker. So if you look at the sealed, uh, as we expect, we have a very linear response with a very shallow roll off. And if I tick the base reflex response, uh, we can see it's very linear since it's the maximally flat response, but uh, it has a, a better uh, low frequency response because, uh, as you can see, uh, when the response starts to roll off, it starts to pick up again because here is the uh, resonant frequency of the port somewhere at uh, 23 hertz. So uh, by uh, having this, uh, this port, we extend the frequency response of the box, but we have a box which is twice as large. Now, if we head back to the SPL chart, we can see a, a bit of an anomaly over here. So it's something that uh, I didn't expect to see that the high output base reflex box has a lower decibel count compared to the 6th order bandpass. So um, I was expecting to see something like something around 133 decibels to be more precise. But uh, since uh, it's actually lower than the 6th order bandpass that uh, got me thinking. So I had an explanation for this. If you look uh, at how my trunk is set up. You can see I have that uh, hole which uh, uh, makes the trunk communicate with the inside cabin of the car. And uh, when I place, uh, for example, here is the sixth order bandpass box. You can see, you can actually see the hole, so it doesn't obstruct it. But uh, when I place the high output uh, base reflex enclosure, since it's so large, uh, it actually obstructs that hole, so you can imagine, since the microphone is inside the car, that um, uh, these uh, decibel ratings will be somewhat skewed. So, it is what it is. In reality, this uh, box scored poorly than the 6th order bandpass. Although, uh, in uh, a different scenario, I'm sure it will, it will be it will have a higher decibel uh, count compared to the 6th order bandpass. But nevertheless, let's uh, compare the frequency response. And as we expected, we have a horrendous frequency response because you do not want this. We have a very high peak at uh, 34 hertz. And uh, you can see these uh, I don't know how to call it, these uh, dips and peaks. Um, this is because the port uh, 
somehow has a phased mismatch with the, the speaker and when you add the, the two responses together you get uh, these uh, cancellations and reinforcements for some reason but what's important that is that we have the this peak at 34 hertz and uh, it should be very loud at the, that particular frequency it doesn't score particularly higher because uh, it is what it is in our car now let's talk about the passive radiator and funny enough this uh, little enclosure scored uh, just as good as the base reflex uh, with the linear response don't expect it to have uh, the same uh, sound quality it is what it is it's just a small box you can see the external volume is only 36 liters which is uh, roughly three times as small as um, as the base reflex box but in terms of raw output it uh, performs equally as equal to the base reflex box so if you look at the frequency response let's declutter the chart and if we compare it to the base reflex we can see that we have this hump over here which is to be expected since we have a very small box you have that peak um, just before roll off and uh, a, a steeper uh, roll off curve now let's focus on the four folder band pass and this has uh, an output which is one decibel higher compared to the base reflex and uh, this is to be expected uh, what is impressive is uh, that the box is just half the volume and um, it performs uh, better in terms of uh, uh, raw output but let's look at the frequency response so if I untick the passive radiator and look at the four folder bandpass uh, we can see that uh, it has a uh, a nice usable subwoofer range but it has this awkward peak over here this is because the box is uh, was not tuned correctly so you have to take these factors into consideration as well so even though I uh, followed uh, the instructions of how to build the box I modeled the, the frequency response in such a way but when you build it if you actually measure the frequency response you might run into the surprise that you have uh, this uh, slight misalignment so if i head over to WinISD so this is the modeled uh, frequency response of the fourth order bandpass box which is fairly uh, linear now what really happened the front chamber was actually tuned lower so if I modify this tuning frequency to let's say like 43 Hertz instead of 47 you can see the similarities so let's go to 41 there we go we have this slight hump over here so if I head over to the frequency response you can see the the similarities but since um, uh, this box has a slot port I cannot do any modifications to it if it had a cylindrical port a, a plastic port you could uh, take it out and modify it to to make this frequency response more linear so in this case you would want to increase the tuning frequency therefore uh, reduce the length of, of the port so you stick the port out of the box you cut uh, uh, a little piece from it and then you stick it back in and hopefully the response will uh, straighten out but since it, this uh, has a slot port we have to accept what it is we cannot do any corrections not the same thing can be said for the sixth order bandpass box so if i tick the response of the sixth order bandpass we can see that it's uh, much more linear since it has uh, two uh, cylindrical ports uh, we can measure and then uh, by trial and error you can adjust the size of the port until you match your desired response so you can see that the, the sixth order bandpass has very nice uh, linear response and if we look at, at, the, at the raw output 
it even scored uh, uh, in first place, so to say. But uh, you have to take into consideration that uh, the overall size of the box is pretty outrageous. So 142 liters is basically a small wardrobe. Finally, let's draw some conclusions. Now, when you hear these conclusions, please bear in mind that these are somewhat mixed with the facts and my personal opinion. So, uh, when it comes to the sealed box, I would choose a sealed box if you want something small or if you're, you don't have much experience with the speaker building. So, let's say if you calculate the box to be like 40 liters and you make it like 45 or like 35, so uh, somewhere with like, I don't know, 10, 15% difference, you have an error in, uh, in the exact uh, volume. It's not really a problem. You will not hear much difference, even if you uh, compare them side by side. So the difference is small. Um, if you want to go for base reflex, uh, then uh, you have to have some experience with uh, software modeling and uh, it'll be somewhat challenging to build because you have that uh, uh, base reflex port. So you have uh, an additional item to care about. Um, and this one will also bring you uh, a boost in uh, output. Uh, what concerns the high output base reflex enclosure, please do not build such an enclosure. It's a piece of crap. Uh, just do it if you are going to those uh, SPL competitions. Otherwise, I don't see the reason to build such an enclosure. If you want to go to passive radiator, then again, my opinion is that uh, uh, if you want a really small box, then you want a boost uh, in output compared to sealed because sealed has a re reasonably uh, small box. But if you go with passive radiator, you can make it even smaller and uh, with higher output. What concerns the fourth order and sixth order bandpass enclosures? I suggest that um, you have a measurement microphone and the know-how uh, uh, to measure the frequency response. And uh, as you build it, please use a circular port so you can adjust uh, the size after the box is finished. So you measure the frequency response and adjust accordingly until you reach your desired result. And you will have a good results this way. Otherwise, uh, the result is pretty unpredictable. 